So you finally got your GCC acceptance letter. I'll take you through what steps to take next. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are visiting for the first time, my name is Anna If you haven't subscribed to this channel, press that subscribe button below. Remember to press the notification button to receive notifications every time I upload new content. So if you're looking for information around leadership development, around career development, um, around engineering, um, this is a place for you to be. So do press that subscribe button below. For those of you guys that have subscribed, thank you so much. We've grown so much in the past couple of months and I'm really looking forward to us growing even stronger in 2019. I'm so excited by the testimonies that I've been getting. So to everyone that has passed, congratulations. Thank you so much for making me feel valued um, and letting me know that these videos that I am posting out there that I'm putting on YouTube are actually adding value. Even if it helps one person, it's all worth it because it lets me know intention is really value adding and it's really helping the way that I actually wanted to in the first place. So if you're seeing value in the videos, please, please do like the videos, share the videos with those that may need them. Also, let me know what content you're wanting me to share more of so that um, I can help make your journey a little bit easier. GCC, Government Certificate of Competency. So I do have a series or I do have a playlist that's out. If you haven't seen any of the videos, do check that out. I'm still getting emails on some of the questions, which I answer in the videos in the, in the playlist. So if you are starting out, have some questions around the GCC, make sure to check out the videos that I've got in the playlist. There are a couple there. Um, so in one of them, you are likely to find the answer to your question. If not, and you've checked out all the videos, feel free to ask me any additional questions. If you've got content that you're wanting me to go into further detail on, then let me know. So share your comment below if there's a specific um, topic that you want me to explore in a lot more detail and share subsequent videos on that. Feel free to do so. Um, some of you guys are asking Q&As or asking questions in... Um, via email on LinkedIn and I'm just answering that way but if you feel that this is something that many more people are wanting to the, the feedback or the answer to I'm very happy to create content and, and put it out there and share with everyone else so one of the common ones that are, are coming through though right now is the next step so you've got your letter how do you get started how do you know um, whether to start with law whether to start with plant and um, their strategies on, on what you can do, obviously, to, to pass the different exams. Um, I've also shared resources on where you can find links, um, which courses you can look into, refresher courses, which companies you can affiliate yourself with so, so you know that you set yourself up to, to succeed. So for those of you guys that don't know, the sittings are twice a year. So you can write one or both exams in June and then again in November. Um, so there are accredited centers where you sit down and write the exam. They are all flown in from Pretoria to the different centers and then sent back, obviously, for marking by the, the examining body, right? Once you've applied, you will get a response and get your letter that you're um, approved and accepted to sit in the exams. And you're given three years to write the two exams. So both exams are about three hours long um, and you can sit for the plant exam or the law exam. They're both not on the same day. So if the sitting is in June, they won't have the law and the plant exam at the same time. So 9 to 12 in june or at the same time on the same day um in november so the one might be so there might be a couple of days apart so the one might be on the monday the others on a friday or the one is today the next one is seven days later so so it varies you do send the dates out in advance so do check out the department of labor portal i will also leave a, a link below once you've got your acceptance letter you want to follow these three things so you set yourself up to succeed the one is start now so don't procrastinate. If you're anything like me, I'm one to leave things to the last minute because I'm the type of person that works well under pressure, but we're all very different. Not all of us are the same. But with something like this, because there is so much content, there is so much of the syllabus, you're basically taking your four-year engineering knowledge and degree or diploma, the experience and exposure that you've had in the plant, and you're wanting to put it into or try to use that in a three-hour exam or test. It is a lot to take in. Also with the OSH Act, it's a book that not many of us have been reading for, for years on end and know it like the back of our hands, but we stop familiarizing ourselves once we start seeing that this is a journey that we want to embark on, right? So there is a lot of information. So the first tip and the first piece of advice that I can give you is start now. So start with your study sessions or start with your, or your study regime and get yourself into a routine and a program starting now. So in one of the previous videos, I shared something that worked for me is that every single day I study for four hours until I wrote the exam. Weekends were obviously longer. I would spend the entire day on a Saturday. After church on Sunday, I'd spend the rest of the day on Sunday and even into the night. So understand your learning style, how it is that you grasp information a lot better. But if you're going to write your exams, start now. 
start studying. So grab your past papers, start going through them. Grab all your textbooks and syllabi from the past, start going through them. Um, grab your OSH Act, start reading through it, write your summaries, start challenging yourself every single day to start talking the lingo so that it's so that it's ingrained and it's, it's stuck in you. Um, come June or even come November if you're writing at the end of the year. You need to decide as soon as possible whether you're writing both exams now or if you're writing the one now and one later. So a strategy that worked for me is that I started off with the OSH Act in June and wrote the plant paper at the end of the year. So it gave me almost the whole year to refresh on thermodynamics and fluid mechanics, on strength of materials, um, on electrical wiring. So to so it took me the entire year to refresh, obviously, on what I'd learned for, for the past couple of years in tertiary and also what I'd learned and been exposed to in the workplace. But all of us are different. So decide right now because that'll also determine how you pace yourself and how you strategically map out your schedule so that you cover all the aspects of what you're needing to do for your plant exam and your law exam. Mind you, if you didn't know, in your, in your plant exam, there is a question. It's one of the mandatory questions that will relate to the law. So question three, usually it's question three. They ask about the law, but they ask about practical application in the factory. So it might be around risk assessments, or it might be about a requirement from the OSH Act that they want to see that you are able to apply it back in the workplace. So, so yeah, so, so think strategically around whether you're wanting to write both, one now or one later, and then start having your schedule and your study regime around that. And one of the ones that I talk about so frequently that probably was one of the most instrumental for me because it helped me remember some of the principles based on something that I see every single day. So there is a lot of jargon. There are some big words, some you'll be seeing for the first time. What's important really is that whatever you're learning and taking in, you're looking to see at work every single day when you get up and go to work and you walk the factory, you're walking with a different pair of eyes because now you're thinking about, oh, in the OSH Act, they've made reference to pressure vessels. Let me go check if we're compliant. In the OSH Act, they've made reference to um, working at height. They've made reference to construction. They've made reference to power-driven machinery. Every time you're, walk, you're walking through your factory, through your workshop, doing your maintenance, going through your utility systems, now you're relating it back to something that you know that you will be tested on, which is in the OSH Act. Basically, you're taking that book and uh, translating it into something practical. So when you're sitting in that exam center, you're thinking about something that you see every single day. So it makes it easier for you to remember and to relate. So start now. Decide whether you're writing both now or one later so that you can plan and pace yourself and schedule your studying regime and start applying it in your workplace every single day starting today. Let me know in the comment section if there's additional content that you want me to share. Share this video even with the playlist with anybody who's writing, who's wanting to know more information, who's struggling to find additional content. Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow and lead for change. Shop.